my attention is very scarce. Uh -huh. And if you want it, we either have to be dating or shit has to be happening. And there you it is. baited me. Okay, hi everybody. Thanks for coming back if you've been here before or hi, welcome if you're new. My name's Mickey, I'm a therapist and we talk about therapisty things on this channel. And today we're talking about something that's a little different. I don't know if you guys are on the same side of TikTok that I am, but I am being plagued by videos <laughs> made by one particular man that we're going to talk about, trust and believe. But this did sort of open a can of worms for me um, in regards to alpha dating advice. If you've been on the channel for any length of time, you will know um, that not only is this a, uh, you know, an inclusive and like anti-misogynistic place, uh, but also that I've talked about folks like this in the past. I will link that video up here in case you wanna watch that. Um, but this felt like the last person that we talked about to the nth degree. So we're gonna watch some TikToks today and talk about all of the problematic advice that exists uh, in the alpha dating advice corner of the internet and hopefully give you guys some red flags to look out for when we talk about dating. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm polyamorous and so I do uh, sometimes spend time on dating apps and like trust and believe that I was shocked and horrified to learn actually like the depths of depravity that exist on dating apps like this. So um, now more than ever, I feel passionately about hopefully providing people with some good advice about what to look out for and things to avoid and things like that. So really quick, before we get into these videos, I wanna give you a quick disclaimer that first of all, we're talking about this with the purpose of being educational. Um, it goes without saying, please don't look up these people. Don't go find these people and harass these people. That's not the point of this video. Um, I do make a conscious effort to try to talk about people who have like a following, who are making the conscious choice to put themselves out there on the influence on the internet as an influencer rather than just like innocent bystanders who happen to have terrible takes, but still don't harass people. This is not an invitation to go find these people. I'm gonna try to censor their um, identifying information to some degree to avoid that. But again, we're talking about this with the purpose of being educational. And again, like trying to, you know, educate and like improve ourselves and our own relationships. That said, we're gonna talk about this video. Um, there's three videos here that I wanna show you. We'll start with this one. Belief needs to be deeply ingrained in your head in order for you to get good with women. I'm a professional dating coach and I teach guys how to understand the female mind. The belief is as follows. Now, a lot of you are gonna fucking pull back from it, but you need to fucking learn it. There's no way you're going to get my numbers in both quantity and quality if you do not have this belief. Really quick, before we even talk about whatever this problematic belief is, there's a couple of things that I wanna draw your attention to. The first of which is that this person is positioning themselves as an expert in both the world of dating and also understanding, quote, the female mind. There's, there's a couple of things that I take issue with this. First of which is that this person has no self-specified credentials, right? I wanna be clear, I am not interested in policing uh, whether or not people are allowed to give advice or provide their own um, input about their, you know, about life based on their experiences and things like that. The internet is wide and vast and there is space for folks who are not necessarily credentialed experts like I am to share their advice. And that is sometimes actually really good and valuable and important advice to exist, right? And also, <laughs> this is not that. This is truly just a dude in his car speaking prescriptively about the lives of others with bupkis to show for credentials. And like, again, if you're not new here, you'll know this is a button for me. This is like a, a thing that especially irritates the shit out of me because there's no reason for you to be telling people to follow your advice when you have no good faith inclination that this will actually work for them. And especially that it won't backfire or create a negative impact in their life. Like this is a very dangerous game to be playing. On top of that, this assertion that I help guys understand the female mind this will become a theme when we talk more about other folks in this like alpha dating niche that uh, comes up a lot, which is that in order for you to be good at dating, um, that you have to understand and therefore be able to manipulate the female mind. All of this is steeped in um, like an implied assertion that in order to successfully date, you have to be able to like infiltrate and manipulate the female mind. And it's all, it's all steeped in this like power and control conversation that's very icky. It also turns into abuse and manipulation and, and violence really quickly. Be very wary of anybody who tells you that in order to pull numbers 
um, which is very objectifying and dehumanizing to be clear. In order to pull numbers like me, you need to have this perspective, right? Because the truth, we're gonna talk more about dating and like a helpful perspective to bring into dating later, but like, let's just finish this video first. Here it comes. It is my reality. And Ooh. she is just a guest. One more time. One more time for the people that just got shocked and awed and just like I punched them in the face or something. It is my reality. And she <gasps> is just a guest. You need this. You need to put this in here and lock it away and make it control all of your actions. Uh -huh. That's how you get good. You're welcome. The music and the the infantilization that's happening here is just such a button pusher for me. Again, besides the fact that this is steeped in this underlying and like implied conversation about power and control dynamics and the ability to manipulate folks in order to date them, question mark. There is also a really important uh, issue for us to talk about here, which is that this perspective, that this person is just a visitor in my reality, turns into abuse really quickly, right? But this is also not true. Like, I think it's obvious to a lot of people that this is very much perpetrating violence um, against mostly women and like folks who are negatively impacted by misogyny. But there's also like a, a glaring and obvious flaw here, <laughs> which is that that's not true, right? You can tell yourself this, but the truth about human relationships, regardless of whether they exist in a platonic or a romantic sense or otherwise, is that we all live in our own subjective versions of reality. This is the crux of why we experience conflict in relationships, right? This is an unavoidable truth about the human experience, which is that it is impossible for us to really fully actually separate ourselves from our own subjective lived experience. And that's like for good reason, right? Doing that is actually like really dangerous. There's like a whole world of why we don't wanna be doing that. It's actually like really healthy for you to live in your own subjective reality and the work in finding relationships that are healthy and happy and founded on a mutual interest and desire um, and respect and compassion and care is in being able to effectively communicate our subjective reality while validating ourselves, while empowering ourselves, and also creating space for somebody else's subjective reality to be valid, to be true in their experience. And how do we then put these pieces together in a way that uplifts both of our wants and needs, that honors both of our experiences, that honors both of the things that are important and necessary for us, and also creates like a mutual goodness of fit and like benefit in our relationship, right? Obviously it's not quite as like formulaic is that. Still, the point that I wanna make here is that a lot of this alpha dating <laughs> advice is steeped in this idea that you will never successfully date someone someone unless you manipulate them, invalidate them, rob them of their empowerment and autonomy and refuse to allow them to have a seat at the table when we talk about structuring our relationship in a way that uplifts both of our wants and needs. This is abuse, right? Like this isn't about being like suave or cool or having game. Like this is straight up advice about how to try to manipulate folks into being unable to defend themselves so that you can fucking steamroll over top of them and reap the benefits of having a warm body standing next to you in a relationship, which is violent. Like this is gross and scary and also terrifying that people fucking engage with this advice in good faith and like really believe that this is true. Please be very wary of people who use terms like this or believe or say things like this because this is a world of red flags that just does not need to exist anywhere near a healthy or happy or safe relationship. Okay, before we go any further, I wanna pause and talk to you about this week's sponsor, which is Dipsy. We have partnered with Dipsy before. Y'all know that I love them. I'm especially jazzed to be working with Dipsy this month because I'm putting together my summer reading list and things were looking a little bit bare. But thankfully with Dipsy, I have a whole season's worth of short and sexy audio stories right at my fingertips. For those of you who don't know, Dipsy is an app that is filled with hundreds of short and spicy audio stories that bring scenarios to life with immersive soundscapes and realistic characters. The best part about Dipsy though is that new content gets added every single week. So you can get lost in those immersive soundscapes about things like a fantasy series about werewolves or fairy smut all the way up to Regency era historical fiction. So you can re-listen to your faves over and over again, or you can get lost in something new. As a person who really loves to read, but just really prefers an audio format, I appreciate that Dipsy offers a modern approach to romance through their high quality and captivating audio fiction. If it's not clear by now, we really love Dipsy around here and I think that you will too. So for listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30 day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash Mickey. That's 30 days of full access when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash Mickey, dipsystories.com slash Mickey. Thank you again to Dipsy for sponsoring this week's video. Let's go ahead and hop back in. This next video that I wanna to talk to you about is the one that first caught my attention that I was like, oh my God, I think we need to actually talk about this on the channel. Um, so we're gonna watch this and then we'll talk about it. 
you do not have to accept her rejection. I'm a professional dating coach and I teach guys how to understand the female mind. Now, if you're one of the people that haven't applied anything in my course or my videos or anything like that, this video is not for you. This is an advanced technique. This is for the people that have the course, have my videos, fucking are applying it, seeing results. And eventually I'm gonna put this in the course. I just don't have the time right now, so I'm releasing it now. You don't have to accept her rejection. Okay, so many things off the dome. Um, This advice about just don't respect people's autonomy and refuse to honor consent or to, to obtain consent in your interactions with strangers, fucking wild. A wild ass fucking take that, in my opinion, invalidates whatever credentials or experience this person has. No one on the fucking face of the planet should ever be giving advice saying, just completely disregard people's lack of consent to engage with you. That's a wild ass fucking thing to say online, on purpose, out loud with your full chest. Besides that fact, the uh, energy here of like, oh, I was going to put this in my course, but I forgot or didn't have time to. And so I'm just releasing it in a TikTok now instead. Uh, this is a thing we've we've talked about this before in regards to people in the fundamentalist influencer niche that just really chaps my ass as a person who like I would say tries fairly hard to make the content that I produce somewhat professional, somewhat well put together. I do my best to not like have my whole ass out on the internet most of the time. It really fucking irritates me when people do this where like, I want you to take me seriously as a professional, as an expert, as a teacher, as a mentor. I want you to take me so seriously that you give me your hard earned money in this capitalist dystopian hellscape to to teach you something about a thing that I claim to be an expert in except that I can't be bothered to film this not in my car, to remember to include this in the course material that other people have supposedly already paid for. I'm not convinced that anybody pays for this garbage, to be clear. The fact that we can't even be bothered to structure all of this in a way that approaches even a base level of like respect for the people that you're asking to give you money irritates the fuck out of me. And it also, I think, speaks to a level of immaturity and a lack of maturity and like, adultness uh, (laughs) to be platforming themselves as an expert. This person is like shitting the bed, not just at being an expert in regards to like what actually works in terms of like helpful advice about how to engage like, I don't know, in best practice for dating, but also just like as a professional generally, there's nothing that this person is bringing to the table here that should incentivize anyone to take them seriously, to give them their money or to take their advice about anything. Now, here's an example. I was talking to a girl and she said, oh, you know, I'm not really interested. And I, instead of just going, okay, and then just turning right way, I did this. Why would you not be interested in me? I'm the best, absolutely the best. And she's like, oh, how? I'm like, well, you'd have to come over in my house to find out. And you'd also have to be okay with kink and you'd also have to be okay with my mastery of the ropes and the fact that I have multiple women. And actually, maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe you, uh, you wouldn't be the best for me. I just know, I just know that this person <laughs> This person told everybody in high school that they had three, four, five girlfriends, but you don't know them. They go to a different school. Their name is Georgina Glass. Like, that's this person. <laughs> this is the person who says, no, I'm like, actually, I was famous. Like, I, I'm i like famous in like another city. You wouldn't know about it, but like, th- this is fantasy. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I love a good fantasy read as much as the next guy, but not this way, not this kind. This is so transparently fabricated that it just, it blows my mind. Besides the fact that this is dangerous advice that perpetuates violence against women and folks who are negatively affected by misogyny that also is just like ineffective and and violent and gross and like icky it's also like blatantly false there is not a world where a person who says no i'm not interested and is then told by someone well actually you would have to be okay with kink and my mastery of ropes that this person then turns around and is like wait pick me Huh? I can promise you that this is not happening. And besides the fact, even if it is, relationships that are predicated upon this first interaction being like essentially a manipulation are not healthy. This is not good advice. Again, besides the fact that I would be willing to bet a million dollars that this is not happening and that the success rate for this is negligible, if not zero, this is also going to lead to a relationship that's unhealthy, that's unsafe, and that again is predicated upon an initial disregard 
disregard of somebody's consent. Th there's no world where this is good dating advice. We also talk about this man who's so into kink and stuff and then immediately ignoring their boundaries. Yeah. That's such a good point. I don't know if you guys heard that. Um, Aaron brought up the fact that this person who claims to be so in mastery and interested in kink seems to not have a basic understanding about consent or boundaries. Let's just be clear about a couple of things, which is that kink especially, like kink is one of the the um, things we talk about fairly often on this channel in regards to like sex and, and empowerment and liberation in that regard, because there is actually a really wonderful and conscientious and like explicit focus on boundaries and consent and limitations and healthy and open communication. Kink is a wonderful vehicle actually, or like a wonderful um, niche for people to like be clear about boundaries. Like this community is like pretty outspoken about the importance and the necessity of boundaries because also kink can become very dangerous very quickly Anybody who has any amount of experience in a healthy and safe kink environment will absolutely have a firm grasp and like healthy respect for other people's boundaries and consent. This person does not. Let's keep going. And now I did turn it around at the end, but I could have left that part out and still got her to start bantering back and forth and she did. She started going back and forth with me and I started building attraction in that because now I had sidestepped her fucking rejection. Granted, keep in mind, I didn't force it. I didn't say, no, 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 you're gonna, I just, played into her little fucking game. I knew she was playing with me a little bit or just kind of disengaging and I gave her a little bit of fun. You want to know what I did with her later? Ew, ew. There's so, there's so many things that are wrong with this. Again, I also want to point out the fact that this person is choosing to represent someone rejecting you as a game, right? This is central in this like alpha dating advice niche, which is that we'll use binary terms because they all use fucking binary terms. What a surprise. They structure this advice around the belief that anytime a woman tells you no, or isn't interested in you, or doesn't text you back, or doesn't text you back fast enough, or doesn't express the amount of interest that you think that she should, she's playing a game. It's all a game. It's all a fabrication. It's all about manipulation. No, it's not. No, it's not. People who say no to you more often than not are just not fucking interested. It's also really important that we acknowledge that especially in this world where like we're normalizing trying to pick up on a person at a bar, that that person could be there for any number of reasons, right? People who are out at a bar or a club or a restaurant or whatever, it's like sort of stereotypical or like cliche. That's what I'm looking for. These cliche environments where people associate this with like picking up on women. A lot of times folks who are in those environments are there because they're um, participating in a social engagement with friends. They might be on another date. They also might just not be interested in you specifically, right? Like there is a world of reasons that someone would say no to you. And that first of all, they don't owe you a fucking explanation about that. But second of all, that has nothing to do with this covert game of manipulation and power and control and trying to gain our power back. Like this is asinine, first of all. This is not true or or helpful. It's, it's silly, honestly. But again, it's important for us to call out the fact that this belief that women say no because they're playing a game with you leads to violence, right? And this is why also people who are negatively affected by misogyny fucking say no to people at bars and clubs and restaurants because it's fucking dangerous, right? It's fucking dangerous to engage with people like this because we're rolling the dice about whether or not this person is gonna follow me to my car after I said no, or whether or not this person is gonna refuse to leave me alone and it's gonna linger around my drink to the degree that I feel like I have to put my hand over it, right? Like this is a behavior that oftentimes gets flagged by folks as dangerous and scary and manipulative and violent for fucking good reason. This is never appropriate or safe advice to be perpetuating. Okay, I have one more to show you. This one is a follow-up to this video, so we're gonna talk about this um, before we move on to another creator. Going off the last video, ask a girl, can I get your number? She said, oh, no, I just got out of a relationship and I just, I don't know if I'm ready to date or whatever. And I handed her my phone and said, go ahead, type it in, it'll be fine. We can get Chardonnay, we can talk like girlfriends and talk about your old relationship with this guy. Yeah. We're not gonna do that, but it's gonna be okay. Another example. Once again, not forcing it, not being super aggressive. She can say it. no again, which at that point I would have disengaged. But guess what she didn't do? Didn't say no. And that was the first time it happened. And then I did it again and again and again and again and again. And most of them ended up coming over my house, ended up sleeping with me. You just gotta know how to do it correctly. The music and the little smarmy facial expression, all of this is is 
giving liar, first of all, but second of all, again, really important for us to talk about the fact that this person is refusing to honor when people say no. This person, even though he's saying these things about like, I'm not forcing it, I would have walked away. Like, would you have though? Like, this is not at all communicating a respect or an interest in other people's boundaries and consent. And this is also important to acknowledge here because a lot of times this like, like pickup artist behavior is going to be enacted by folks who are, are you know, less in the like conventionally or societally approved of uh, like attractive column, right? But there are people who abide by this advice or really believe in this advice that are attractive or, or like conventionally attractive people. That doesn't make it less toxic though, right? We're going to talk about some other people um, who like in a, a societally approved of body or, you know, like conventional attractiveness would be given a pass for this advice by some people. And like, it doesn't matter, right? A lot of people are clowning on this man because he's not conventionally attractive, which like I, whatever. But I do want to call attention to the fact that there's no world where this advice is safe or healthy or okay, regardless of what the person looks like. Because again, this is predicated upon this belief that violence against women is an okay thing to do if it gets me the result that I'm looking for, which is abuse. Let's talk about some of these other videos. Three emojis men should never use when texting a woman. Number one, anything with a monkey face. This looks massively immature and feminine. X score, nine out of 10. Number two, red heart. If you are gonna use a heart, only use the black one. Number three, any emoji that shows too much excitement, emotional vulnerability, or romantic interest. The big smiley face, sad face, kissing emoji, eggplant are all perfect examples. Once you stop using these emojis, you're gonna notice that women are gonna start respecting you woman. more. So try it out. Women are gonna notice hey, you more. Is it gay? to text women? <laughs> okay, this is the other thing that's important to address in regards to this like alpha dating advice thing, which is that so much of this is steeped in a misogyny and sexism and also just like a hatred for women, right? Again, we're using binary terms here because a lot of these people use binary terms and it's just faster, quite honestly. But this attitude of like, don't show excitement, don't be emotionally vulnerable, don't be invested, don't be interested, honestly just communicates a deep distaste and a hatred for women. Which is odd considering that these people make so much of their life about how to attract women. I think this is also uh, an important moment for us to level set that a lot of this advice is not actually about how to get in a relationship, how to date successfully, how to find uh, safety and happiness and attractive, or not attractiveness, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Stability um, in a relationship, right? None of that is at the forefront of these people's focus. A lot of it has more to do with how can I attract a, a person that will provide me with the most social capital with other men. This is very male gaze centric. And also again, like this is not about like, I struggle with relationships or I, you know, I'm socially awkward or, you know, I don't have like a good barometer for social interactions. And so I need help so that I can find a partner that I can love and care for, that we can have mutual respect and like forge a life together. This is about, I wanna, I wanna find this person that I see as an object that I, I don't actually really like. I don't value them as a person. I don't care about their humanity. I just wanna use them to uplift my own ego, right? This is gross, <laughs> this is horrifying, and also probably why these people struggle so much with dating. Nobody wants to fucking be in a relationship with someone who treats them like an object and who devalues their very humanhood. I'm sure that some people do, but that's also like, you know, something to be said about our work uh, in terms of our self-esteem and mental illness, and that's morally neutral and human, but it's still not an okay reason to pursue a relationship with a person like this. People who are committed to dehumanizing you and objectifying you and who fund fundamentally hate who you are. They don't need advice about pickup strategies or about the wrong or right emojis to use. These people need to go to therapy to address what is actually a deep-seated self-esteem wound and a deep-seated hatred for women. This is dangerous, this is violent. And again, I just wanna draw people's attention to the fact that this is not actually about like a, a loneliness or a sadness about not finding companionship because they're not looking for companionship, right? If you notice, none of this has to do with like, how can I improve myself 
myself so that I can find a partner that's a good fit for me, right? That like our values and beliefs align, that I can be supportive of and loving of. How basically all of this boils down to how can I con somebody with a vagina into standing next to me for long enough so that my my bros will fist bump me and make gross and lewd sexual jokes with me. It's not surprising to me that these people are struggling to find relationships because you don't fucking like the people that you want to date. There are a variety of reasons that this can be happening and I think that's all work that ideally is done with their own individual therapist. I'm not gonna get into trying to like diagnose or like psychoanalyze complete strangers, quite honestly. But again, I just wanna drive home the point. There's really something to be said. There's a conversation to be had about the way that misogyny and the patriarchy negatively affects men and how it limits their ability to emotionally engage in intimate and deep relationships that are fulfilling. That's all very valid and morally neutral and it's important for us to have a conversation about that in my opinion, but this is not that, right? This is blatant objectification and dehumanization. Also, who cares if you're 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 making a, an emoji that has a heart, a red heart or a black heart, like hello? You're just afraid of being feminine. You have internalized this belief that women are inherently bad and so you are trying to structure your masculinity around being as least feminine as possible, which is first of all misogynistic and also homophobic, right? This is, it's weird and and it's, the thing about this that's interesting to me is that these people tell on themselves so much more than they think they do. A lot of it is this grandstanding and like this like, oh, look at me flexing at the gym, do you see me? I'm so shiny, I'm so oily. And like, it's not cool or interesting and all you're doing is telling on yourself about the degree to which you first of all hate women, but are also deeply fucking insecure and that you don't fucking like yourself. And it's sad, this is sad. Okay, but there's another video by this creator that we're gonna talk about, let's watch this. The reason why it's a good thing to be a woman's first is because the first guy sets an imprint on her. You ever been with a woman oh, to where oh, she tends to prefer a certain guy in terms of physicality or even behavioral characteristics? That's because of her imprint. So that's the first guy she either fell in love with, the first guy she had sex with. You can be the first for a lot of things, but the point is you need to set that imprint on her if you want her to not only be attached to you long Long term but also remember you long term so the girl you're talking to right now an easy way to actually implement this is try new places go to the things that she's never tried before things that you never tried before and when this adds up over time and over time then that's how you actually get women more attached to you you know what this sounds like this sounds like a 43 second video that's a fucking promo for grooming is what this sounds like this belief we're gonna get into how this is false and wrong first of all but this belief that you need to be somebody's first boyfriend, sexual experience, whatever, so that they imprint on you turns into, I date 19 and 20 year olds because they don't have any prior sexual experience. And so, you know, even though I'm 35, this is totally fine because she imprinted on me really quickly, which is a fucking problem. This turns into sexual violence, coercion, manipulation, and abuse so fucking fast that it's, it's alarming that people are really out here just talking about this openly on the internet as if this doesn't like obviously flag you as a sexual predator. Like, hello? Okay, let's, let's double back. Let's talk about the imprint thing. First and foremost, human beings are human beings. We're not dogs, we're not animals, we're not bears, we're not geese, monkeys, or whatever other fucking animal that you wanna use as the basis for your belief in this, this imprint thing. That's not real, right? None of us live in the Twilight universe, thank God. Imprinting is not a thing. That's not real. Human beings don't imprint on each other because we're fucking human beings. I've spoken at length about how fascinating I think the human brain is because it is such a a deeply complex and highly evolved piece of technology, essentially, that we carry around in our, our skulls, our big bowling ball fucking heads, has one of, the, one of the most highly evolved pieces of biology that we've ever seen. And that's fascinating. And also what it means is that when we form relationships with other people, platonic or romantic, familiar or otherwise, that those relationships are, are based on a series of experiences. They're based in our um, uh, attachment. They're based in our, our safety, our stability, our mutual compassion and empathy and care, a shared set of values, a shared set of attractions 
passion and investment and interest and and love and and pe all of these things, right? There are so many factors. I can sit here and list factors that impact whether or not we are safely or securely in relationship with someone all fucking day. But you know what's not fucking in there? Imprinting. This is a wild ass fucking take. And again, also really just telling on yourself that the only way that you can find somebody to stand next to you in relationship long enough is by manipulating them, by gaslighting them, by lying to them and abusing them into thinking that you are a worthwhile and good partner. If you are a good person, who is kind and loving and empathic and deeply cares, wants to know about somebody else, who wants to find a relationship with someone that also cares about you, where you have a shared interest and desire to learn about one another, to be in community with each other, to uplift each other and to care about each other. Finding a relationship can be very difficult. Don't get me wrong. Dating can be very difficult, but you should not struggle to the degree that these people do to find somebody who is worth investing in and who wants to invest in you. Relationships are about a shared sense of commonality and love and empathy, not about trying to gaslight and to trap somebody into being stuck with you. Nobody should want to find a partner. Nobody should be seeking out relationship advice based on how I can trick this person into staying. That's wild, again, because you're telling on yourself that you're a partner who's not worth sticking around for, that nobody wants to fucking be in relationship with you, probably because you objectify and dehumanize and potentially abuse and manipulate people, but also that you don't see see yourself as a person of value. You don't see yourself as a partner who's worth being with just because of the way that you are, because you're really walking around peddling this advice that in order for men to be in relationship with women, you have to lie to them. Hello? That's not true. That's not true. And any person who is a safe person will be able to find community and relationships in whatever degree that you want to. Obviously, again, with time, this is a difficult thing to do sometimes, but it is possible for you to find relationships with people being a safe person. You don't have to resort to being an abuser to find community and connection. That's a wild ass fucking take. Just Jesus. Okay, I have two more videos for you. I know this is running a little long, but I have two more videos we're gonna talk about and then we're gonna call it. If a woman ever asked me to pay for a date, I would spit on her face and walk out. How dare she? Yeah. How dare she ask me to pay yeah. for a date? That's her job. Part of the advice we huh? give these men is to set up standards for yourself. Thank you. For example, when you go out on a date with a woman, minimum she should be spending on the first date $200. If she's not spending at least $200, I have news for you. You're not on a date. You're hanging out with a friend. Oh <laughs> the explosion noise at the end. It's so deeply embarrassing. Like, for their heart and soul, so deeply fucking embarrassing. On top of this, let's just be clear. There is a whole world of nuance about who pays for first dates and whatever. I think there's a very like patriarchal undertone to like men should pay for first dates, but everybody is entitled to their own value systems. But here's the thing, communicate that up front. First of all, let's be clear about what feels like a good fit to us. And also, if we're putting a dollar amount on the amount of money that somebody should be spending on a first date, you'll go away. Go oh, so far away. Like, we're done. We don't need to have this conversation. We talked about this actually on a recent episode of the pod. I'll link that below. We have a podcast, by the way. It's pretty great if you don't know. But we talked about how this very capitalistic mindset has corrupted and rotted so many of our relationships into being this system of perfect reciprocity where I do for you and then you do an exactly reciprocal amount for me and then it's my turn and then it's your turn and then it's my turn. Otherwise, our relationship is uneven and it's bad and then we have bad boundaries. That's not true, right? We should not be viewing relationships as a piggy bank or an investment system. Do not do something for someone if you you will be upset at them if they don't reciprocate it for you in kind in the exact right way with the exact right amount of attention or money or time or labor or whatever. That's problematic and that's not helpful. I'm not gonna go on a whole rant about it, but just the, all of this is bad vibes. Also, can we just talk about the blatant fucking hypocrisy that exists in this like alpha male space where like, I'm a provider, I'm a protector, I'm an alpha male, I'm so strong, I protect women from other men. So I'm acknowledging that men are inherently predatory and abusive, but I'm such a protector and I'm so cool. But also pay for my dinner, pay for my dinner. I'm so rich, I have so much money, but can you pay for my dinner, mom? Like, hello? What the fuck is that? Like, it's embarrassing and it's also gross and it's just silly. Like, it's just childish is what it is. Okay, I have one more video for you. Let's talk about this disaster. And most of you men, you guys have to learn something. If you ain't sleeping or dating or messing with a woman, don't even look at her stories. Don't even like her photos. 
the second I see provocative photos that a girl is posting, unfollow because I don't need that shit. I'm not thirsty and I don't give out free validation. My attention is very scarce. Uh -huh. And if you want it, we either have to be dating or shit has to be happening. And there you beta males need to have that same mindset. And all these women wouldn't have inflated egos because all you guys message them 24-7 on Instagram and comment that you would drink their bath water and all this other sim shit that I just, oh my God, I don't fucking get it. Yeah, it's clear. It's clear that you don't understand a lot of things about relationships. First and foremost is that, did you see what happened there where he said, in order for us to be talking, in order for me to be giving you validation, shit has to be happening. Essentially to mean that in relationships, this man contextualizes relationships to mean, or conceptualizes, excuse me, to mean my emotional investment and availability is a currency that I will provide you only if and when you provide me with your currency, which he views women's currency as being sexually attractive and also sexual favors, essentially. This is a transaction. This is a business transaction. And also, again, first of all, hire a sex worker. Sex work is real work and that's a real thing, right? That's totally fine. And if that's uh, a vehicle for you to feel uh, validated or to find a sexual release, there's nothing wrong with that. But that's not what relationships are though, right? <laughs> relationships where we have an exchange of mutual emotional connection and intimacy and vulnerability and safety and stability and all of these things, it should not be predicated upon this currency that first of all is reductive at best. Uh, because again, this is like so very obvious obviously and loudly dehumanizing and objectifying women as, as being objects that solely exist for the purpose of the sexual gratification of men, but also that this man really said out loud, I refuse to be emotionally available for anyone unless I'm getting my dick touched. But then also in the same breath, we'll talk about these things like the male loneliness epidemic and how crippling and sad it is for these men to not have relationships and to not have community. But it's the call's coming from inside the house. This is the problem is that you, if you choose to exist in a world where relationships only serve the purpose of you getting your dick wet, this is why you're not experiencing emotional deepness or intimacy or validation. This is why you're not experiencing a shared mutual connection that's based in a human to human understanding. It's because you conceptualize relationships with women, first of all, as being not a relationship with a person. This is an object who provides you with a purpose of essentially being a whole to fuck and then you're confused that you're not receiving any emotional validation and that this person doesn't want to fucking be with you? Hello? Like this is not, this is the thing that's sad about this is that it's not a complex scenario, right? Like dating, don't get me wrong, especially dating apps and all that can be very difficult, right? And also finding a relationship with someone, if we're going in with the intention of being a person who truly values and cares about another person, who truly wants to learn and understand and be in company and like witness the, the humanity of this other person, it should not be difficult for you to do that, right? You shouldn't have to really try all that hard to give a fuck about other people's humanity and their very humanness. Like that's not, this is not a complex thing. And again, I want to encourage people to recenter their focus, especially if you notice people doing things like this, where like they revoke their emotional investment in you. If you're not having sex enough or if things aren't moving fast enough, or if they dislike you posting provocative photos, fucking red flag, run away. I am so incredibly excited for all of the people that this man has unfollowed because nobody needs to be in this man's immediate vicinity until we've done a lot of deep seated work on ourselves and our ability to be safe and respectful of people that he's in relationship with platonic or, or romantic or otherwise. There's no world where viewing emotional availability as a currency to uh, procure sexual attention is a safe or healthy thing to do. And again, this is also the thing where we're telling on ourselves as like, first of all, really deeply disliking women. I don't understand, like as a person who dates both men and women and, and people of like varying gender identities, women are so cool. <laughs> like being in relationships with people, don't get me wrong, it's not that I dislike being in relationships with cis men, cause like my husband is a cis man and I think he's wonderful. Uh, but being in relationships with people who are not cis men is such a deeply magical experience. Like it's not hard <laughs> to find like a wonder and a joy in just getting to witness 
these people <laughs> being who they are. Like it's truly magical and I just don't understand or relate to this idea that it's difficult for, for people like this to value women as like these intrinsically magical and interesting and creative and complex individuals who like have a whole world of good and, and value to add to the world. Like, I don't get it. And also I'm deeply off put by the, the obvious desire to be violent and hateful towards people that this man seems to have a very obvious and antagonistic relationship with. Just yikes. Like I said, this whole niche of the internet, um, it's not like a surprise to me necessarily. Like I knew that this existed, but it is still deeply troubling that it like exists enough that people are engaging with this content. I want to encourage people to be aware of these red flag things, especially people who use the word like females, right? Like if I'm going on a date with a female, like these kinds of things, red flag. Notice those things. And especially like, if nothing else, have that open communication with your safe people to be like, hmm, went on a first date with this person, got kind of a weird vibe, right? Like, is this a thing that's okay for me to be weirded out by? Am I being dramatic? Like have that communication with folks because especially what we know about safety in regards to dating, especially in a modern context, is that we need to have community around <laughs> these issues and around these conversations. Like gossiping and community and, and like communal communication um, is a vehicle for preserving our safety and for creating like a safety network, right? This is why having discourse about this on the internet, for example, is really valuable and important in my opinion, because when we call out these behaviors, when we draw attention to these things and we create a series of like red flags to be aware of. It helps people to avoid potentially being sucked into relationships with someone who is committed to dehumanizing them, to objectifying them, and also to manipulating and abusing them into the dickens, right? This is all bad and like it's important to talk about, I guess is what I'm saying. This is one of those areas where I think it's good actually to be a hater. And so talk about these things, have these conversations with your safe people and don't do the thing where you tell yourself, especially for those of us who have been negatively affected by uh, the patriarchy and misogyny and those types of things, don't do the thing where you tell yourself, I'm I'm being mean. I should give someone a second chance. Maybe I'm being judgmental. No, you are allowed, right? What will feel like being bossy or severe to you is likely actually just healthy boundaries, right? Is actually just you acting on a, a suspicion or a feeling that's very valid and that's very okay. Please give yourself permission to say, I got a weird feeling about it and so I'm not going on a second date with this person, that's allowed, right? There is a whole world of wonderful people who exist out there that are safe and kind and respectful and wonderful and interesting and also have a deep and, and uh, intimate desire to know about you as a person who care deeply about your thoughts and feelings and interests and want to meet your needs and, and non-negotiables in relationships. So uh, I think I give this pep talk on this channel all the time, but like raise your standards, push them up, you you deserve that. You are a magical and beautiful collection of stardust. And like the fact that you just exist is magical and beautiful. And I think we should celebrate that, especially in regards to being picky about who you're in relationship with. You deserve that. So I just, wow, wow, wow. Um, if you guys want me to talk more about this, I can. Let me know what your thoughts and feelings are. I'm sure this will stir up thoughts and feelings in the comments. So let me know. If you like the video, like the video. You can subscribe to the channel. We talk about stuff like this, kind of. We also do a nice educational moment that I'd love to have you stay for. Um, and you can share the video to help the channel grow and to help each other grow. And I will see you guys next Saturday. Okay, bye.